This video will look at module design. It's called the full Monty. I'll show you why. This is the abstract. You can pause it and read it later. So this work was inspired by Monty Don, TV's favourite gardener. It looks like it looks at the commonality between module design and garden design and see if there's any similarity where one can help reinforce the other. Is it relevant? You know, you'll see throughout this discussion that I really like to depict and draw visuals as to what my module looks like. And therefore you've got to ask if it's relevant. So does drawing out a mod module actually make any difference? And my answer to be this would this. Why am I wearing this t-shirt? You'll see in the video I'm wearing this t-shirt. Now that's a clue as to why I think module design is important and designing it out and sh showing it and depicting it's important. See if you can work out why. Throughout the whole video and discussion, I've created this for you to work on. It's just a, once again, <laughs> this is very visual, but it's a way to help you scaffold and to help you focus your discussion. You can talk about, obviously this is a discussion, so you can talk about whatever you want within this um, session, but here are just a few things to help you, to help you focus your discussion. And for our regular points, I'll show you which end to fill in. So now might be a good time to hand these out. Make sure you've got a copy of this to write your notes on it. If you can make sure, as it says there, that you write the name of the module in the middle. So think of a module that you're currently designing, ready for next year, and whack it in there. And then hopefully we can put a few notes down as well as we go. So this will not just be a nice little aid memoir, so it'll be something you can take back with you. So first of all, we look at environment. So when we're looking at module design and garden design, we look at the environment. So one thing you have to work out is what do you want to grow? So do you want to grow vegetables, as we can see here? Do you want to grow wildlife garden? Do you want to grow um, plants and shrubs or trees? So what exactly do you want to grow? Next, you look at your soil type. So as you can see there, is a very clay soil? Do you have very boggy soil, etc.? So you've got to take this in consideration. And then you might want to look at the shape there, the, the layout of your garden. So you can see there, that's a very vertical garden, is that one? So they've really made best use of shape. Or you might have a weird L-shaped garden or something like that. So when looking at garden design, you've got to take into consideration the environment. So how does this translate to module design? Well, once again, like before, you had to look at the plants here. We're going to call them students. So what kind of students do you have? University of Northampton is a wide participation institution. So we have that kind of different student. What module are you teaching? Because certain modules can be taught in certain ways and they lend themselves to certain things so this is an enterprise um, cohort so we might all be teaching an enterprise but are we you know is there certain different modules so if you're teaching an accountancy module it might be very different than how to teach a marketing module and then finally don't underestimate yourself okay what how do you like to teach there's always a lot written about how learners like to learn but remember it's teaching and learning so let's focus on how we like to teach as well because if you're teaching that something within your comfort zone you'll clearly be better at it some people are good lecturers some people are good in seminars some people are good at abl or tbl or any other tla that you can think of so how do you like to teach so there we go Fill out the green section there. So you can see in that green section on your piece of paper, you've got two questions. What learning style best suits your learners and what teaching style best suits you? And try and keep your answer within that little triangle there. So just answering the two green questions, answer it underneath and keep it within that triangle. Next, we're going to look at structure. Now, Monty Don, who the, you know, this, the other... <laughs> unwitting con contributor to this paper he always talks about pathway and how a pathway is a good spine for a garden and it creates the nice spine you can see that they're almost looking exact well a bit of an issue with that but it looks like it has the curvature of a spine he also says well if you have a pathway it should go somewhere so you can see here that this pathway goes from the pergola towards the top end of the garden and actually if you can see very much in the top right corner it actually loops back around and connects the top up there as well so the pathway is the 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 backbone of a garden so with myself this is a module i created for enterprise and opportunity and therefore i used you can see there the box standard business life cycle i know that there's better theories and concepts out there but you know it's, it's just using something 
You can see there that's where my two assessment points are as well, one at the end and one in the middle. That might become a bit relevant a bit later on. So there we go, time to fill out our sheet. Looking at the structure side, what concepts could you base this module around? So is there a key theory? You may have to tweak one or another, you know. So I, I, I wrote one uh, a little while ago for a colleague, which was um, IMC, uh, communication, integrated communication. And, you know, we, 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 used, we based it on Burlo, but we created a hybrid version of Burlo, you know. And also as well, what assessments should be best? Remember, a pathway's got to lead to something, and ultimately our modules lead to an assessment. So how can you create the whole module to help feed in to this end thing? How can you create this pergola at the end? Next, we look at features. What features are in a garden? So these might be ponds or sheds, trees, whatever, okay? Some of these things are set <laughs> in stone, okay? And you can't move them. So when looking at module design, we have my module here, but then there's the Easter break. Okay, and this is why purposely the assessment, the second assessment, comes after the Easter break. The first one comes halfway through the module, and it only assesses the first half of the module. In fact, it only assesses the first third of the module, but it gives him a couple of weeks to, to write it as well. And the second assessment point that comes at the end after the Easter break is intentionally after the Easter break because it's a reflective journal. The second assessment is a reflective journal. So therefore, it, Easter gives them the time to really reflect on it. So it gives them that period to look back and to collect evidence and see how well they're doing. Also as well, this was a, what a colleague did, but they teach a module on advertising and they look at how packaging is used as an advertising medium, but they always make sure at times in that lesson coincides with Halloween. So you can see here we got some Fanta based Halloween that were out this last year. So, you know, can you use these features, these things that are happening, can you use them within your module design? If you're going to have a big three, four weeks off for Christmas, when do you, how do you pace things? How do you time it? I'm a big fan of pacing things at the right setting. Okay, fill out the features there. Are there any key dates? You know, are you a summer module? Are you a, a, a winter module? And I find it hard to read that last one. Um, da -da -da -da. Oh, can you link it to any professional standards? So are there any other features that you're missing out on? So by looking at it that way, can you link it to any professional standards? Now we look at the range. Now we can see there's a whole range of plants there, but there isn't. Okay, Monty Don and Titchmarsh, actually Alan Titchmarsh, the two TV garden rivals, but they both agree on this. I've seen them both on numerous times quote this, that you should never have more than seven variety of plants in your garden. Now that picture there looks like a whole host of plants. And I know it's, it's, it's a bit zoomed out so you can't see, but that's just roses. All there are in that picture are roses. So in effect, there's only one plant there. There's loads of varieties of the plant, but there's only one plant. And then that way, you know it goes well together because of the variety. And here we have a badly designed garden. Too much happening, too colour schemes a bit all over. No real flow, structure or anything towards that. And uh, they haven't really paid much range to the range of plants. And there's plastics and metals and, you know, the, the range doesn't work together. So what's this mean for module design? Hopefully you can see that. So that was that's the full enterprise and opportunities. That's how I draw it out so I can see what's happening week by week. And you can see there, most weeks, with the exception of week one, there's only one or two theories and that's it. And where there are multiple theories, such as week four, marketing, or week seven, human resources, the actual the theories feed into, they're just used to reinforce other theories. So marketing is just STP. So then, yeah, we look at the different types of segmentation and the different four Ps of uh, targeting and perception, map, etc. But it all feeds into STP. And this is interesting because this was identified, as I said, the assessment is a learner's log, and students actually state that they think the first mod, the first lesson is a bit too busy. You know, they really like the simplicity and the flow of the la latter lessons that just focus on one key theory. And the key and the reason for this is about depth of knowledge. So as we saw earlier with the roses, it's about one flower used in a multitude of varieties so roses you can have shrubs you can have trees you can have climbers etc so that one plant can be quite versatile so can we do that with our theory rather than just trying to 
cover loads and loads of different things within that 45 minute lecture. How about we just cover one or two things, but really go to the depth that's needed, really show our students what depth we need to cover. There we go then, time to fill out that last purple square, you know. Um, just I've asked a couple of questions there, uh, key theories that should be in this module. So earlier we looked at just one backbone theory, these are just other supporting theories that you think are very relevant. And that's a great question there. How will you know when your learners know? What will they do that lets you know that they've got it? So that depth of knowledge has been achieved. Because waiting until the assessment is a bit dangerous sometimes to, to work out that they've got it. So you can really hit the depth within the each session. That's going to help us out. These questions, questions, by the way, are not finite. It's just to help to facilitate the discussion. OK, get chatterbox in. So if you haven't worked it out yet, those these things fold up in a certain way. If you read the instructions on the bottom, cut the bottom bit off, fold them up in the right way, and then turn to your neighbour and you can ask each other questions using the, the chatterbox. And finally, to conclude with, so we looked at four key areas, the environment, the structure, the features, and the range. And within the environment, the GAN design looked at the soil type, the layout, and the plant preference, you know, so what kind of soil you got, um, how's it all laid out, and any plant preferences. And then with students, as we said, do we make the students fit the teaching style or vice versa with the pedagogical preferences? So which one comes first? It's like trying to put a certain plant in the wrong area. And then the module, once again, is it a short and fat one? Is it long and thin? Does it feed into other modules? Would other modules be better before it, etc.? So looking at the layout of the module and how they fit together all in all. We'll look at the structure. You know, there's a pathway that goes somewhere and therefore that links into the module by, you know, is there a key concept that we can really scaffold most of this to us so that learners really understand this module? You know, sometimes I like to do this in a, in a lesson where you go, if you've learned one thing today, this is hopefully what it'd be. When we look at the features, the ponds, the sedge, the trees, these are things that we can't really move, so why not incorporate them within, to, within our module, you know, so let's make use of them, let's really exploit these facts. Then we we'll look at the range, it's the variety of plants, the colour scheme, etc. And as I said, keep the variety down, so that when that translates to the module, it's about the depth of analysis. So we keep the theories down, so we can go a lot deeper. You know, sometimes I've sat in lectures and people have covered about 9 or 12 theories within a 45 minute lecture so that's about three <laughs> three four minutes per theory it's just not enough time so it's about demonstrating that depth okay and if anyone wants to know why the t-shirt once again as you can see big visual fan love the uh, visual things and making things easy to see but hopefully you can see yes that's freddie mercury or it's supposed to be freddie mercury at the front but at the back that's the periodic table now, for anyone that doesn't know the history of the periodic table, when they first discovered these elements and noticed things were had in common, they then started to plot them on this table. They worked out how things worked. And by plotting them on the table, they realised where the gaps were. They realised, hang on, we should have an element that kind of does this and does this and therefore would fit in that gap. And then hopefully that's why I'm suggesting by yourselves, by physically drawing out the module, you can see where the gaps maybe are and where things don't flow onto other things or there's too much too much content in one section and not enough content in another section etc so i'm not saying this module designs as as important and as groundbreaking as the periodic table i'm just saying let's plant some seeds and see how it grows <laughs>